So with our last 15 minutes, I have, I want to try doing one last reading for J.D. Vance. He is the current vice presidential candidate uh, for uh, the Republican Party. Okay. okay. Being asked to get a specific deck. One second. Okay. Um, the ancestor deck is calling to me. And I'm also going to pull um, angel answer oracle cards because I have a feeling you're going to be asking some yes, no questions. So we'll let the cards answer that. And if okay. I can tap in intuitively, I will. But this ancestor deck that I'm going to be pulling, um, it is an African god deck. Give me one second. Um, so we're using an angel deck and an answers deck. Yes, so the angel deck, hold on, I'll show you. The angel deck is by Radley Valentine. Okay. And the African God's deck is by Diego de, de Oxy. And these are other psychics and sages? Is that how that works? Other deities. Other deities, okay. So we're working with archangel energy. We're working with uh, African ancestral energy. What's the uh, what's the specific archangel energy and African ancestral energy about? Like, how are they how are they unique compared to what we've been using? So I was just using a traditional tarot deck, um, Rider Waite, very a very traditional deck. Um, tarot has specific meanings where these are oracle cards. So these tap into the higher realms to give you answers spiritually on what's going on. Okay. That sounds um, awesome. I could say the last wasn't spiritual because it was more so, again, tarot tells a specific story. Where tarot, each card does have a specific meaning. It does mean something. Where oracle, oracle is all-knowing. So it's going to tap into, like I said, other ethers and be able to bring out a spiritual connotation of what kind of to expect from this presidential candidate. Okay. And for funds and kicks... I'm going to pull one card from his past life to Ooh. show how it ties into his current life. Oh, I like, I like these funds and kicks idea. Pulling a past card out of this guy's life is going to be fun. <sighs> Keith is chuckling over here. Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to talk as uh, I'm going to talk as JD Vance. Okay. okay. One second. You're going to, Tell me to stop shuffling three times as I shuffle uh, three decks. So we're going to start with the first one. Uh, okay. Tell me when to stop shuffling and think about what, I don't know if you want to ask the questions out loud or. No, I'm just, I am. Th okay. I am just thinking of a particular question that always comes to mind when I see JD Vance and I've just got some questions. Think about that and then tell me when to stop shuffling. You can stop shuffling now. Pick a pile, one, two, or three. Three. So it's already starting off tumultuous. <laughs> it's a, okay, let's do it. I'm going to hear it. What do we got? We got two more decks. Oh, we're doing three Oracle decks for JD fans. Tell me when to stop shuffling. You can stop shuffling now. Okay. Okay. Oh. Tell me when to stop shuffling. Stop shuffling now. All right. And one more. Call his name three times for me. J.D. Vance. J.D. Vance. J.D. Vance. I'm going to take this one because this one was a jumper. Okay. All right. Hey, yo. Got jumpers. Stop shuffling now. Okay. So he actually has a couple of lies, a couple of timelines um, merging right now. Right off the bat, I'm getting that he does. he's not confident he's going to win. <laughs> oh, I don't think he's confident he's going to win at all. Okay. Let's see what the cards have to say. I just... You know. He's a man that is... He comes off as the king of cups. He has good emotional maturity to a sense. He can be tolerant. He has great people skills, 
but to the point where he talks himself in and out of stuff. He's a guy, hold on. He's a guy that, (laughs) I wonder if he's a Gemini. Do we know his birth date? We can look it up. Let's look up J.D. Vance's birth date. J.D. August 2nd, 1984. No, his birthday is tomorrow. He is a Virgo or no, he's still wearing Leo. He's a Leo. Okay. This is weird. So, all right. Maybe this is his father. And I'm going to say why I'm saying that. I got the Mm -hmm. King of Cups in the upright and the Page of Cups in the reverse. Can we look up his father's birthday? August 15th, 1959. Oh, no, 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 never mind. July 6th, 2024. He died July 6th. He was born July 30th, 1956. July 30th is still Leo. So there are two Leos. Okay, okay. This makes sense. Okay, this makes sense. They're two Leos. The father, I'm for some reason, I'm picking up on his father. Okay. His father was the temperament, emotional, emotionally balanced, creative people teacher. like he was a good people like he, he knew how to work a crowd yeah unfortunately his son is a prick i'm sorry to say it like yeah yeah he is very emotionally immature he acts like a child um he's the type that give me my ball i'm going home i don't want to play with you guys anymore type of attitude mm-hmm. um, he would he would not make a very good leader for this for him like I said, he's already walking into this race with dim luck. Like he knows it, it, it's a long shot. The thing is, he has the wheel of fortune in the upright. Oh, that that was like our first case. He had the wheel of fortune in the upright. Right. But it's again, one of those situations. Our political climate is a circus right now, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With him... He is being given this opportunity, but he's he's not one. <laughs> I'm stuttering all over the place because that is the climate of his household. That is the climate of his life. It is. Remember when I first started? I didn't even start shuffling. I said this is starting tumultuous already. That is his life right now. This is one big shit show for him, and it's tearing his household apart. His wife does not like him. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm feeling that too. But you said the wheel. Remember you had the wheel you had taught. I'm just trying to learn. He has doors that are open, still open behind him in his past that he's trying to go back and close. Is it possible that he can't? Yeah, that's yeah. not happening. <laughs> that's not happening at all. What's he hiding? Is he is the tumultuousness hiding anything? Um, let's see. He's financial irresponsible. It, uh, he would send this country into ruin. Mm. Uh, he is very underdeveloped. He, someone is using him as a buffer, it looks like. Because guess what? We got the moon reversed. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, so what does that mean? Because I think he's being used by all sorts of people. What does that moon reverse mean? Very, a very distorted look. We're being deceived. And like, like. Again, the powers that be are doing what they do, and they don't want to make it look like other forces are at play. So let's throw someone underdeveloped, underqualified out there. Let him make a fool of himself to take some of the distraction from what's going on over here. Mm -hmm. That's just what he is. Um, And not for nothing, his beginning and end is going to be very fast. It's going to fizzle out very fast. He's not going to be able to let go of this. His mom, I don't know if she's still alive, but she is going to play a part for him. He has a weak defense. Like his campaign is weak. His foundation with this whole campaign is just very off. Does he have any shadows that are looming over him? Very much a lot of mental conflict. So let's look into his past life. Let's see where that plays into part. Because... um, in two of his past lives that's coming up right now, I'm going to talk about these two first and show you how it ties in, and then we're going to pull another okay. one. Um, in his first past life, he was in some type of law. He was either a judge, a lawyer. He was responsible to make laws or law enforcement. 
he identified as a woman in this lifetime. Yo, no. He was a he finished law school and you're saying and he identified okay, tell me more about him identifying as a woman. How is that coming out in the cards? Because that's gotta be spot on. So him identifying as a woman can mean a few things. It can be feminine energy that's coming through that we're picking wow. up on. It can be that a feminine figure figured prominently in his life. But as his identity as a woman, this was during the late modern age. So again, remember I said his timelines are, colli are, are colliding. So outside of him coming up during the late modern age, he was located in the Middle East. He had a philosophical faith. He was he had a widow or widower type of love, meaning he was a widow. Um, and his he grew up in Middle East Ohio. That's crazy. Okay, this is so interesting. Now his lesson to learn during this lifetime was learning to walk the middle path. What is he doing right now? Walking the middle path, pretending to be straight and not gay. Oh wow! Um, <laughs> you said it. <laughs> No, I mean, he, if, if he identifies as a woman and he's walking the middle path of acceptance, then, and he said in his book that he had been gay once, and then he talked himself out of it. Did you know that? I did not. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. That makes a lot of sense because, Yo! Listen, listen, that was his lesson. That was his lesson, right? The trauma that he had to overcome during this time was material loss. And again, what did I say? He's financially irresponsible. Yeah, and he's backed by a bunch of billionaires and he failed his way up through companies. He would fail and then they would give him another venture. And now they're just like paying money to the Trump campaign to keep him on. That makes total sense to me for him to be financially irresponsible. A financially responsible guy would do it himself. Here is the irony. You ready? Yeah. She died, by, she died by childbirth. Now, don't think of a literal birth. Think of a figurative birth. Uh, let's, go to the, let's go to the next timeline. This guy was a reborn Catholic, and he comes out as a straight Catholic man. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> no, I'm wait. enjoying this. Okay. So the next life, he was in some type of world war, whether yeah. he was an allied defender, an allied invader during the Holocaust or during Hiroshima. During this life, he identified as a lover. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. <laughs> during the world war age, he was located in a lost civilization. He had a fanatical faith and a spinster type love. Now, his lesson to learn during this time was becoming more natural. Oh. <laughs> he had to overcome. Oh, keep learning. Keep learning, buddy. He had to <laughs> overcome. His trauma that he had to overcome was oppression. Yes. And he died by miscarried or at birth again. So he has reincarnated quite a few times and he's still not getting it right. <laughs> That's crazy. So he was, but he was a man that died at birth. So during, he identified as a lover. So we don't know. Oh, in we don't time, know. He could have been out. Well, right. In the time of LGBTQTIA, he has no identity. I guess he would be, as they say, um, he doesn't identify as anything. Interesting. So he's carried this tension inside of himself for at least two lifetimes before he's come here. So let's ask that question. Ask it again. I have one more question. I have, a, I have a question just, what does this mean? You know, cause I'm an immigration lawyer. Can you see, and we got one minute left. What does this mean for immigration? How would JD Vance handle immigration in this country? What would he do if given that sort of power with the sort of conflicting nature that we've seen in his past lives? The first message he got is sometimes the best win is to choose what you're willing to lose. So mm. to answer your question, would he be willing to sacrifice immigration for a greater feat for something that he deems more important? Absolutely. 
Mm. Does immigration stand a chance under his, um, regardless of what his views are from what the ancestors are saying, he would never stand up for them. Mm. He doesn't have the courage to. Mm. He would have to be honest with himself, with who he is and live in his truth during this presidency. And he couldn't. There you have it.